Well, hello and welcome to today's video. Now, if you watched my previous video, which was three reasons why you should consider blogging as an art marketing strategy, then you'll be super excited to know that this one is all about exactly how to structure and write a great blog article for your website. So if you're ready to find out exactly how to structure your perfect blog article, then this video is for you. I'm gonna walk you through seven simple steps to putting together and writing your own blog article that's gonna be brilliant for your artist's website. And stay right to the end too, because I'm gonna share some great tips for formatting your article that will make the difference between somebody staying and reading your article and perhaps jumping off it and looking for something else altogether. So you don't wanna put all that hard work into writing a beautiful article if nobody's gonna read it right, so you're gonna to want to stay to the end and make sure to grab those tips. Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Sophie and I help artists just like you to set up, market and grow a highly successful art business doing what you love. And if you'd like to learn more tips and tricks on how to grow that successful art business, then you're in the right place. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to get notified every time I post a new video. All right, let's walk through those seven steps for constructing a good quality, easy to read, perfect for your audience blog. Okay, so number one, let's do some research. We're going to research your blog topic. Now you might say to me, Sophie, I'm gonna be writing about my story. Why do I need to research the topic? But I want to say to you, you might be writing about your story and very often this is what happens. Somebody writes a lovely long blog article telling a particular phase in their journey and then the title either doesn't really reflect the content or doesn't really make any sense or worst case scenario is not using what we call keywords that somebody's actually looking for. So you want to explore your topic a little bit in something like Google. You can also use other search platforms like YouTube or Pinterest or Amazon if that's relevant for you. If you have a little knowledge for using keyword research tools like the Keyword Planner that's free, you can use that as well. You basically want to find out a series of words, a phrase, that somebody from your audience might be putting into Google or any other search engine in order to find your content. So what you don't want to do, like I say, is write a lovely blog article and give it a title that doesn't reflect what's in the blog and isn't searched for. So you want to kind of have a look, you plug it into say Google, for example, have a look at the results. Are there other articles being written on that topic? Um, do the articles reflect what you're gonna do? Could you find a different angle on what on what's there already or is, does the results bring up nothing at all and that for me would be more concerning I want to make sure that you're going to write a blog article around a topic that somebody is already searching for so you're going to do that bit of research have a look come up with some ideas try putting different words into Google that might give you different results and you might go oh actually that's sort of similar to what I want to write about but this person doesn't do it from this angle or doesn't mention the things I want to mention great, I've got a new fresh angle on that topic. And it will have given you some ideas on titles as well. Now we want to make sure here that you're not gonna be copying content and you're not gonna be copying a title. That's really, really important. All you're doing is doing the research so that you can be better informed of what's already out there, perhaps what people are liking, searching for already. You might find a topic that's a video that's got a million views. Then you know, oh, wow, this is a topic that people really, really, really want to know about. All right, or you might find the topic is not, you don't get any results for the topic you wanted to write about. So you wanna make sure that there's enough people interested in your topic. All right, number two. So having done your research, you're now gonna formulate a title for your blog. So you take that research and you put it into a title. Now here's the thing about titles. It needs to make sense. It needs to reflect what you're talking about and you want to avoid long, ambiguous, complicated titles that maybe take two lines to write. You know, if you're teaching sort of topics the way I am, then three ways to the key, the six keys to this, that and the other, the five steps to something, right? Something that people can easily follow. If it's a, a journey, my journey painting from, I don't know, from, from Italy to Spain or something that people are going, oh, okay, I know what's gonna be in that, right? You wanna be very clear with your title. So step number three, now you've done all the hard work really, <laughs> you want to actually get down to writing the draft content for your blog. 
So you want to think about what are the key points that you want to cover. You could write these down in bullet notes. Okay, I want to talk about this, 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 and this. And then you want to do something like think about your blog article in three parts. The beginning where you're going to introduce your topic and kind of get that hook as to why somebody would want to read. You're going to kind of excite them about what you're going to talk about. The middle bit where you are going to then flesh out the bullets. These are the key things I want to talk about. You're going to flesh them out. And then the conclusion and of course, really importantly, the next steps. I like to use a simple word doc, just dump all the ideas down and just get writing. Other tools you can use, of course, is put a timer on. I quite often, if I'm going to write a blog, which I haven't done in a while, but there was a time we were writing lots and lots of blogs, I would go to a cafe, nice environment, nice cup of coffee, timer on for 90 minutes, and I would just get to it and write the draft content. Step number four, you want to create what we call subheaders. Now, I don't know about you, but I am definitely what's called a skim reader. So I will search for a topic, I'll find a blog that I want to read, and instead of starting from the top and reading every word, I skim down looking for the bulleted, large writing, you know, any key things that stand out. And if I'm interested in those, then I might go back and read the whole blog article, or I might read a section of it. So you want to go through the content that you've written in draft and think about the skim readers. What are the clear, like a header for a paragraph? What's a key point you're talking about? And then you could just bold those or make them larger on your draft copy. And you know that these are going to be the subheaders that you're going to um, actually alter when you put into your website. So you just make them bigger on your draft and, and then you want to make sure that if somebody only skim read your subheaders, they make sense. Right, they just kind of, they flow from one to the other to the other. And or ultimately, of course, really are going to excite somebody to want to read that paragraph that's below. Oh, ooh, what's that bit about? I want to go in and read it. So that's really, really important part to do as well. Number five is creating your calls to action. So not only do you, of course, want to write a fabulous blog article and then use all those tips I gave in the previous video for actually repurposing the content out into social media, but you want to make sure that somebody has the opportunity to take action at the end of the blog article as well. So think to yourself, what do you want them to do next? Do you want them to read another article? In which case you're going to link them onto another blog and another blog and another blog. Do you want them to go watch a video about the topic perhaps here on YouTube? Do you want them to sign up to your newsletter, to your email mailing list? Do you want them to do that? Have you got a freebie download that you would like to send them to to get that? Or would you like them to give them a special offer code to go to your shop and buy something off the website? Whatever it is, provide a clear call to action. In, you can do that in a few places if the article is long, but definitely at the bottom. Love this article, here's what to do next. Because people like to be told that. They read an article, it's like, oh, I really enjoyed that. Now what? Well, here's another, blog article you might like, here's the video you might like, or here's a download that's particularly pertinent to this blog. So you want to be thinking all the time, what's the customer going to do next? So one of the magical things you can do blogging, just like you can on YouTube, is you can actually link to other blogs all the time. So what I would do on my, on my copy, on my word copy, is I would already be aware of the other blogs I've written. You can keep them on a spreadsheet just to remind yourself. Then as you go through the copy, you can think, oh, wait a minute, I've got another article on landscape painting that I wrote. So you bold that for yourself to remind yourself that when you put and upload the content into your website, you're going to use that bolded text as a link to that other article. So if somebody's reading down and they think, oh, there's a link to, I can learn more about landscape, I'll come back to that in a minute, or there's a link over here to another article going deeper into this thing. So ultimately you want to create as many links as possible because you want to keep people reading on your website. Step number seven, of course, it's completing the blog. So now you've done all those bits and pieces, you want to pull it all together. You want to go through, look for any spell checks, grammar, or anything you've repeated a few times. You want to make sure that your keyword is through your article as well. Again, I like to use a timer to, to stay on track because I don't want to wander off and find that three hours has gone by and I'm still looking at the detail. Like keep moving yourself forward. You know, we don't need to strive for perfection in everything we do. So long as it's good enough and it hasn't got any core basic mistakes in it, you know, let's get the article published. How many words should you be doing in an article? At least 500. 
maybe over a thousand is better, 1500 is good. And then of course, if you want to do a really bigger blog, you know, maybe you have one core topic that's your thing, that's your niche, you could write a really massive sort of two and a half to 5,000 word blog, and that would be something you would send people to all the time. And of course, it would link off to other things as well. Could be one of your key marketing strategies. So once you've done that, obviously you upload it onto your website, add in images, do the links, do all the formatting, etc., and get ready to publish. But before you do that, I promised you some key tips to be following and thinking about before you hit the publish button. So let's go ahead and do those. All right, so I call these my top tips for legibility. Number one, make sure that you use clear bullets because there's nothing like a short bullet makes it easier for people to just read. What you want to do is avoid big paragraphs. A paragraph should really only be sort of four lines deep because I don't know about you, but I find those really difficult to read. I don't really want to read a long paragraph and I'm going back into skim mode. So short paragraphs, use bullets, use bold to emphasize things, use italics if you've got a quote and maybe just a bit of blank space around that so it pops out. Ensure that your text is left aligned. Don't do any sort of fancy sort of aligning, just keep it clear and easy to read. Make sure the font size is large enough. 16, 18 point I like to do a blog in because you, know, you don't know where people are reading on their phone, their iPad, on the computer. If it's written in tiny font, people are never gonna read it. And again, avoid colors, avoid a fancy artistic font that looks great but is completely illegible. Just use the bog standard fonts, nice good size, plenty of white space in around the blog so that you can go skim down it and read it really easily. Use little images, of course, to illustrate things so you can break up your blog with nice illustrations and pictures. Makes it again very nice to read. Check for sentence flow now you've uploaded it. Make sure that it all just goes down very, very nicely and you haven't got an awkward paragraph that doesn't make sense, in which case, get rid of it. Then lastly, ask yourself, can you skim? So where you had your um, subheaders, you want to make sure that they are headers when you are doing the formatting. So now you can practice, you can pretend to be the skim reader. You zoom back down the article, just looking at the subheaders. Do they make sense? Can you just skim down there and read it easily? If it's a yes, it's a big tick for you. So I hope you've really enjoyed this video and you're really super inspired to get blogging now. I promise you, although it might seem like a medium to long burn strategy, it's well worth it. If you haven't already, make sure to watch my other videos on blogging and of course marketing your art business as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you've loved the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and I'll see you on another one.